Hi guys, once again, it's me, Guilherme. Godot offers a high-level networking API to help bring players together in multiplayer games. The engine takes care of the most technical aspects of networking and allows us to focus on the gameplay. This is the first video in the series. We are going to see how to create a simple multiplayer game starting with the lobby. We are going to learn how to create a server and connect players together. This is just an intro series. Networking is complex and there is a lot to learn on the subject. I'm here to get you started with Godot's tools and if you want to dive deeper, you'll find links to great resources in the description below. A lobby can be used to let players start the game at the same time. In this case, the lobby is used to let the player create or connect to the server, which can be done at any time. Before doing so, the player must type his nickname as it's going to be used during the gameplay phase. This step isn't required and it's only used here to show how you can save players' information. You could, for instance, save the type of weapon the player decides to use during the gameplay. By clicking on either Join or Create, a function is called from an autoloaded script from our menu script. To begin with, we are going to see how the server gets created as this is the first step needed to let other players connect to our game. The script has three constants used to configure the server. The default IP is set to localhost. In a real world scenario, you'd let the player type this. For example, if I wanted you to connect to my server, I would give you my external IP with the port used to create the server so you could connect to it. The port defines which port to use when creating and connecting to the server. Depending on the ports that are being used on your machine, this can be changed. And the max players constant define what is the maximum number of players that can connect to the server. The function called from the menu script when we click on create is the create server on our network script. We pass a parameter to it, which is the player's nickname, and we save this on our self data object. Then this object gets added to our players array. And this array will be used later when we connect other players to our game. Then we create a new peer using the networked multiplayer inet class. And this object is used to create a server using the predefined port and max number of players, as you can see in this line right here. Finally, this object is provided to the tree of our game, which initializes the high level networking. And that's it. We now have a server running on our machine and the current scene is switched to the game scene. And this is all done when we click on create from our lobby. Just keep in mind that this player that you see on the screen right now is instantiated on our game script on the ready function and this is not done automatically for you by Godot. Now when we want to connect to the server instead of creating it, the process is a little bit more complex. Since we already have at least one player, the server itself playing the game, we must create the correct scenes on the newly connected player as well as create the new player on all other players. This is something that has to be taken in consideration while developing a multiplayer game, as you have to make sure that all players are synced, which in simple words means that they are all seeing the same thing in this particular game, for example. If you go back to the network script, you can see that the connect to server function also receives the player nickname as a parameter, which is then set to the self data object. We then connect to the connected to server signal, and this signal is emitted as soon as this peer connects to the server. After this is done, a peer is created, and instead of calling create to server as we did before, we call create client, and the IP is passed, and in this case, it's the local host and then the port. Remember that you'd have to provide the server's external IP to connect to a game over the internet. And once again, the high-level networking API is initialized by providing the peer to our game tree. And if everything works as expected, the connected to server function gets called because we connected it to a signal. The first thing we do is use the player unique ID as an index on our players array and set the information using the self data object. Every connected peer has an unique ID. The server is always the ID one and that's why we use it on the create server. And every other peer that connects to the network gets an ID which is greater than one. And then an RPC is called using the RPC function. 
RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call, and in other words, this function will be called from this peer on all other peers that have the same function. The first argument of the RPC function is the name of the function that we want to call. In this case, it's send player info. This is the only required parameter. The following ones are only necessary if the RPC itself, in this case, send player info, receives parameters. As you can see down here, send player info actually expects two parameters. The first one being the unique ID of the peer that is doing the RPC. And that's what we are getting from the tree calling the get network unique ID. And the second one being the information, in this case, the self data of this peer. You notice that the send player info function has a remote keyword before the func keyword. The remote keyword is used to tell the engine that this function, in this case, the send player info, can be called via RPCs. Besides the remote keyword, there's also sync. The only difference is that functions with the remote before then won't be called on the peer that did the RPC call. And functions that have the sync before then, so if I type sync instead of remote, would be called also on the peer that is doing the RPC. The first thing that this function does is checking if this peer is the server. Because remember, this function gets called on every peer of the network and not only on the server. This being true, RPC ID gets called to do an RPC on the new player using his unique ID that we are receiving from the send player info to pass the information of the already connected players from the players array. But if this is not the server, what we do is create a new instance of the player scene and then we set its name to the unique ID of the player. And after that, the player starts the game. And now we'll see how this all plays out on our game. I have two instances of the game open here on my machine and the first one is going to be called player1 and I'm going to create a server and as you can see I can already move around and the second one is going to be called player2 and I'm going to join the server and now we have the players connected and as you can see both instances get created on both the server and also on the client. We'll see how the movement of the player is done on the next video. For now, that's all. We'll see how to create the player and make it move on both the server and the clients on the next video. And I hope to see you there.